Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for keeping on blessing us by and through your son, Jesus. He's our TV great reward. He's our indescribable gift that you have given unto the world. Father, we thank you that we have received him by the blood, by faith, by grace, Father. We are saved. We thank you tonight. We ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us, Lord. You will help us. We come to you tonight to obtain mercy and help in our time of need to rightly divide the word of truth. To be hearers and doers of this word, Father God, we ask for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, comfort, edification, and encouragement from this word tonight. As it is hid in our heart, we ask that you order our steps in this word, that we may live and walk and glorify your name. We ask that you rebuke the devourer for our sake tonight, that we can hear your still small voice. We thank you for victory in the word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, teaching every one of you here tonight. It's good to be back in Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I'll back up to verse 11 and we'll read down through. Amen. To verse 13. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 11. Praise God. We find ourselves there in chapter 7. Amen. The Apostle Paul is Amen. Has acknowledged that Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek, without father, without mother, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. But he's our New Testament great high priest. Kills, uh, Jesus, as Melchizedek was in the Old Testament. Amen. But we know Abraham gave a tenth of tithe to. Melchizedek. And we, we now find ourselves in the New Testament. And there's a change from Levi and Aaron and his sons as the priests to Jesus. Amen? Amen? So in Hebrews, the Apostle Paul is encouraging the Jewish Christian, encouraging you and I to continue to go forward in God and not to look to the left, to the right, not to look back to the Old Testament way of doing things and service and worship and honoring God because, amen, we discovered that it was, it was weak and unprofitable for uh, 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 access to God and for salvation, amen? amen? So let's pick up here in verse, verse 11, Hebrews 7 and verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood of Aaron and his lineage, what further need was there that another priest should arrive after the order of Melchizedek? Jesus came after the order of Melchizedek because the amen, there was no perfection in the Levitical priesthood under Aaron and his lineage, his sons. Amen. There could not be access to God for all mankind. There was no salvation in that uh, uh, priesthood by the, by the blood of bulls and goats. Amen. amen. It was. It could not make us perfect in God. Amen. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arrive after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? We know that Christ came out of the tribe of Judah, not out of the tribe of Levi, as Aaron and others. Amen? So the Levitical priesthood, amen, the law and the Levitical priesthood had to be removed, amen, for they were together, they were, what, united. They were united. The Levitical priesthood and the law, they both came together, amen. If one had to go, they both had to be removed, amen. So Paul is describing that the Levitical a priesthood and its demands of the law that came with it, amen, needed to be removed. Amen? Mm -hmm. The law was given in the wilderness during the wilderness experience of Moses. The law was given. But in the New Testament, the law is now, amen, to be removed. Let's look at a few scriptures before we go forward. Just a reminder, go to Romans 7. 
Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. And let's see what the Apostle Paul says to the Romans about the law. Romans chapter 7. And verse 1, and it reads, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Mm -hmm. For the woman which hath the husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. For that she is is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law. We're dead to the law. By the body of Christ. We, we, are, we are married to the body of Christ. We're dead to the law. The law is dead. We're free now to marry to the body of Christ. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. That you should be married to another, even to him. Who's to him? Even to him, even to Christ. We are married to Christ. We are not married to the law. We are not bound to the law. The law is dead, amen? There's no salvation. There's no restoration in the law. Even to him who was raised from the dead. We know that's Christ. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. We are married to him who was raised from the dead. And we should bring forth fruit unto God, amen? Look at verse 5. For when we were in the flesh... The motion of sin, our suffering of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now, see, the law just bring fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law. See, don't let anyone put you under the law. You have to obey the law. Though. You have to obey certain uh, uh, keeping the Sabbath and, and, and rituals and ordinances and, and, and new moons and, and, and anything of the wear certain clothes in a certain type of way. Amen. The Bible says, but now we are delivered from the law. We're delivered from the law. We got to know we're free in God because there are religions today. There are factions today. There are false teachers today and who will come on strong teaching the law and put you back under the law. Put you back where? In bondage. Where you can only bring forth fruit unto death. Amen? But now we're delivered from the law that been dead where we were hell. We were hell. We were hell. We're no longer hell. We were hell that we should serve in newness of the spirit. That's how we now live, in newness of the spirit Amen. and not in the oldness of the letter. Not in the oldness of the letter, of the law. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us in, in Romans 10 and 4, what? Christ is the end of the law yes. for righteousness to everyone that believes it. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. In Old Testament, they attain righteousness by keeping the law, by performing services and, and, and bringing forth bulls and goats and sheep and turtle doves and amen uh, uh, for, for righteousness sake, amen? Mm -hmm. But see, Christ is the end of that. Right. He's the end of the law amen. for righteousness. We are to what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that will be added to you. You seek the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? His rule, his reign, his authority, his government. You seek the government of God. Pray that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are seeking the government of God. A kingdom has to have a king. And a king has a government. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, who is Christ. Christ is the righteousness of God. He is our right. He's the Lord, our righteousness, the scripture says. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Amen. For everyone that believes. Amen? Yes. We're just trying to set the foundation again. Go to 2 Corinthians. We got to get a clear understanding about this law before we go forward. Go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 about the law because 
we Christians sometimes we let people who push down the law stuff on us and they so strong with it and so and we we allow them so much of our time and so much of, to say so much because we don't know how to amen to go to the scriptures ourselves and show them that we're not under the law we, we are, we're not in bondage under the law anymore amen I'm giving you plenty of scripture for you to uh, uh, defend the gospel, def defend the, the good news of Jesus Christ, amen? amen? And what he has done for us yes. at Calvary. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians 3. And I pick up in verse 6. Let's start in verse 5. 2 Corinthians 3 and 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. We know we can't, amen, lead to our own understanding, amen. amen. But our sufficiency is of God. God is our sufficiency. He's the one supplies, he's our source, amen. Yes. Who also, let's read now, verse 6, has made us able ministers, or able servants of the New Testament. Now, how can, how, can, how can you get clearer than that? Mm -hmm. He's made us servants of the New Testament. Yes. Ministers of the New Testament. Yes. Not of the letter. See, Old Testament. He's made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We are ministers of the New Testament. Not on the letter, but on the spirit. For what does the letter do? The letter killing. The letter killing, but the uh, the spirit giving the life. Amen. 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 But if the administration of death was written and engraved in stone was glorious, see, even though the Ten Commandments, what was written in stone, the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, the Bible says. If the uh, uh, ministration of death, amen, uh, was written and engraved in stone, was glorious. Because we know Moses' face shined. It was, the glory of God was upon him, amen. Mm -hmm. It was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Which glory was to be done away? Which glory was to be done away? The glory of the letter was to be done away. The glory that was written and engraved in stone was to be done away. Amen? Amen. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? If the, if, if the glory was on the, that was written and engraved in stone that shone upon Moses' face and it was to be done away with. How, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glory? The, the, the ministration of the service of the Spirit would, came, would come by Jesus Christ and his service unto us. Amen? amen. And his fulfillment of all the prophecies. Amen? amen. How much more? How shall not the ministration of the service of the Spirit be rather glory? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, listen, it even cause the 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 the, uh, 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 the letter, amen, that which was written and engraved in stone, it, 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 uh, it calls it the ministration of condemnation. If it be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Yes. See, what Jesus did, it exceeds in glory. Yes. Amen? Yes. Verse 10, for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. Okay, by the reason of the glory that excelled it. That which made glory had no glory in this respect. The Old Testament had no glory in this respect. What? By the reason of the glory that excelled it. The New Testament, they come through Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, again, that which was done away, it's done away with. We can't allow anyone to push that on upon us and put that weight and that burden and put us back in, under bondage again with Old Testament, amen, service to God. The Bible says it over and over again. For even that which was made glorious, amen, a verse in that forgive me, for if that which is done away or abolished was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. 
Now what has what's remaining? What Jesus Christ has done. Yeah. That's what remains. Amen. Righteousness by Christ. Yes. Amen. Look at verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we have that's such, that's such great hope. Mm -hmm. We use great plainness of speech, boldness mm -hmm. of speech, openness of speech, mm -hmm. freedom in speaking. Mm -hmm. We gotta have boldness and openness and freedom in speaking when we are challenged by one who wants to come, who desires to come, amen, to come and put us back under bondage with, with the letter of the law. Amen? Amen? And it's a lot of preaching, mm -hmm. factions, groups who will put you back under the law and have you confused and have you doubt what Jesus has done mm -hmm. and, and, and considering doing those things, taking the joy out of your heart because, amen, now you're confused with the, about the letter of the law. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. I've given you, amen, again, Romans 7, 1 and 6. I give you Romans 10 and 4, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through uh, uh, 11. Also, write this down, Galatians 3, 9 through 25. We're not going to look at, at that. The, the Bible tells us, amen, that, that the law, amen, it had a purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen? amen. Yes. The Bible says of the law that it was holy, The law is holy, says in Romans 7 and 12. The law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Amen? It's holy, just and good. The law. Apostle Paul says it. But he said that, amen, it's holy, just, and good, amen, when it's used appropriately. Amen. In 1 Timothy 1 and Eight, it says, we know that the law is good. First Timothy 1 8, we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Right. See? If a man uses it lawfully, it's good. We can preach, we can teach out of the Old Testament. Amen. It, but we got to use it lawfully. It's great teaching the, amen, a, a, a leadership and faith and, and, and love and mercy and grace, amen, in the Old Testament. Amen. But we got to use it lawfully. We can't put a burden and put God people back under bondage teaching the Old Testament. And con put them under condemnation, called the ministration of condemnation. Amen. We know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. 1 Timothy 1 and 8, verse 9 now. Knowing this, you gotta know this. Right. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Mm -hmm. The law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, that is why the law is made. The law is not made for a righteous man. Amen? The law was our, what the Bible says, our tutor. The law was used to lead us to, to Christ. Amen? But we're no longer under, what, a tutor. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by our faith. Amen. See, that's what the law, that was the purpose of the law. It was our schoolmaster, it was our tutor mm -hmm. to bring us to Christ. We are to Christ now. Amen. That we might be justified by faith. Mm -hmm. Having faith in Christ, in the blood of the cross, in his death, in his resurrection. We're justified by faith. Now, uh, uh, Galatians 3 25 says, But after faith has come, and faith has come to each and every one of us here tonight. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Amen. We're no longer under the law. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think you've been given enough. I think we have enough now. Mm -hmm. To come back 
anyone who wants to desire or attempt to put us where? Under the law. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to the Leviticus now. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. If therefore profession were by the Levitical priesthood, for it, under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, the priesthood has been changed, saints. For the priesthood being changed, there's made a necessity a change also of the law. Because the, the law came under the, Levit the Levitical priesthood. So if the priesthood has changed, the law has to go also. Amen? Amen. That word change needs to be removed. It has to be what? Removed. In Hebrews 12, 27, it reads, uh, yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken and of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. See? Talking, speaking of the word, the law, and what Christ did. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yet once more, as he was ending this, this, this epistle, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken. Speaking of the letter of the law. Got to remove them. And the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Those things that cannot be shaken that will remain comes under Jesus Christ. Yes. Our Savior and our Lord. Amen. So the Levitical priesthood and the law being changed <laughs> that that would remain in they come forth, and that is what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. Amen? Amen. Lord, amen. Jesus came out for all of the kills today, removing the Levitical priesthood, removing the law. Mm -hmm. The Mosaic law is no more. Mm -hmm. For righteousness. Amen. Over and over. The believer, the saint, the son, the child of God, the woman of God, we're not under the law, saints. Amen? We're not under the law. Thank you, Lord. But we do, we rely on the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Not our own righteousness. Amen. The righteousness of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's keep reading. For the priesthood being changed. There's made a necessity of change also of the law. Let's keep that understanding. The priesthood was changed from the Levitical priesthood in Aaron through the Melchizedek and the priesthood who was a type and shadow of our Lord and Savior. No beginning, no ending. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 13 now. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth or belongs to another tribe right. of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. What is it speaking to? Amen. That um, this change is speaking of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When it's speaking of, let's read it. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, Jesus, that, that another tribe is the tribe of Judah. Yes. Of which no man gave attendance at the altar. No one from the tribe of Judah gave attendance at the altar of God. It was the Levitical priesthood under Aaron and, and then under the tribe of Levi until Jesus. Amen? Jesus came from the line of Judah. Amen? Amen? He came from the line of Judah. So the priesthood has been changed and our allegiance is to Christ who's of the tribe of Judah. Amen? Mm -hmm. And no one comes after him for he lives forever. In the Levitical priesthood, they were only the high priest until they died and one another came upon. Amen? Mm -hmm. That position. 
and that title. But in Jesus, he lives forever. He forever our what? Great high priest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because he has what? Endless life, it tells us in verse 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he has an endless life. And we know he's at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He has an endless life. He resurrected from the dead for you and I. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For, look at verse 17. It says, For thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Forever. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the uh, after the, uh, the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Mm -hmm. The priest is being changed. There is made a necessity of change also of the law, saints. For he of whom these things are spoken pertains to another tribe or belongs to another tribe. And that's Jesus. He belongs to the tribe of Judah. Of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Verse 14. For it is evident it is evident that our Lord sprang arose out of Judah. Mm -hmm. The scripture speaks it. The scripture tells us of this chain. Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. Amen? Yes. For it is evident that our Lord sprang or rose out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He spoke nothing. Verse 15. And it is yet for more evident for that after the similar to or the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. Amen. Another priest. They arise as what? Another priest. Jesus is our priest, our great high priest. He's the one who arises. Amen? He's our eternal high priest. He's the only one that qualifies to be our eternal high priest. Amen? It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses made nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude or likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Verse 16. But let me stick in verse 15. I'm going too fast. It is far more evident. That after the similar to the Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Amen? Amen. The power of an endless life. Amen? Indestructible life. Mm -hmm. Jesus rose from the dead for eternity. Amen? Amen. Death could not conquer Jesus. Yeah. The Levitical priests, they're all dead. Yeah. Death could not conquer Jesus. He went, he had the keys of, amen, death and life. Amen? Yes. He took the keys. Yes. So he's our high priest. Yes. His priesthood lasts for how long? Forever. He has an endless life. We see, we have to know these things. We have to amen, be able to communicate these things to when we're challenged by someone uh, 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 desiring to put the law on us. Amen? amen? It's right here in the scripture to defend, support, and to uphold the, 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 the truth of the gospel. His priesthood lasts for how long? Forever. Forever. We in chapter 7, look at verse 23 and 24. It speaks to that. Let's start in verse 22 of Jesus in this life. But so much was Jesus made a surety or a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our guarantee. 
of a better testament. You know, we have a guarantee when you go buy, you know, something new. Buy a new car and get insurance, get gap insurance. Get a guarantee. Buy new furniture, new house, have a guarantee. Well, Jesus, by, by so much was, uh, uh, was Jesus made a, a, a guarantee of a better testament. A better agreement. We have a better testament and agreement over here in the New Testament. Amen? Amen. Listen, verse 23. And they truly were many priests. Mm -hmm. See, on the area. Right. They were truly many priests because they were not suffered or permitted to continue. They were permitted to continue by reason of death. Mm -hmm. So it was many priests. Mm -hmm. Because they were not permitted to continue by reason of death. But this man, All right. this man, the son of the living God, yes. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this man, because he continued ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Mm -hmm. He has in his, life, in his life, he has an unchangeable priesthood. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at, go to, go to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. Verse 17. And it reads, what it reads. Jesus says here, Therefore does my Father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Mm -hmm. See, he laid down his life. Right. That I might take it again. Mm -hmm. He has an endless life. Mm -hmm. No man taketh it from me. Yes. Amen? Amen? No one took it from me. He laid it down. No man taketh it from me. But I laid it down on myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Right. See, he laid it down. No man took it from him. He could have called what? Twelve legions of angels to rescue him. But for you and I, he endured the cross. He endured the cross for you and I. No man uh, took it like he laid it down that I might take it again to show his power over death. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. Look at chapter 15. John 15. The Gospel of John, chapter 15 and verse 13. Great love hath no man than this, mm -hmm. that a man laid on his life for his friend. Mm -hmm. Jesus prayed proved his love for us yeah. by laying down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. And we were his friends when, when did he consider us his friend? When we were what? Without strength. Mm -hmm. When we were ungodly. Mm -hmm. When we were sinners yes. and at enmity against mm -hmm. God, against the Father. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 5. He considered us, he laid down his life for us and took it again, called us friends when we were without strength when we were ungodly, sinners, and at enmity or enemies toward God. Wow. That proves his love. Unconditional love. Good God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. In 1 John, I already quoted Romans, so I'm not going there. 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 John 3 and 16, the scripture says, Hereby perceive we the love of God. 1 John 3 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. Amen. That's how we can tell God loves us. Yes. He laid down his life for us. Amen. And we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. Amen. 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 Lay down our lives to, to live, be committed, to be devoted for the brethren. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That means be willing to sacrifice, make sacrifices for one another, to suffer for one another. Amen? Amen. In Mark chapter 8, In Mark chapter 8, and I'll start in verse, amen, 35 says, Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You got to lay down your life for the brethren. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. You got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. May I should start in verse 34. Amen? Mm -hmm. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. See? As Jesus laid down his life for you and I, we need to lay down our life for one another, for the brethren. And that's what 1 John 3.16 just said. Mm -hmm. For we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. For whosoever will, will save his life shall lose it. Praise God. We, we, amen. We have to try to save our life and live to the, um, uh, to the utmost in this world. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save him. For what shall it profit a man? What shall it benefit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul for eternity and condemnation? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words. Mm -hmm. We can't be ashamed of Jesus and his words. Amen. Amen. Whoso therefore, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Mm -hmm. Let's not be ashamed, thank Let's not be ashamed of our Lord and Savior Amen. and his words. Amen. We're not, people are not ashamed of but let's make sure we speak of him. Amen. Yes, we ought to uh, uh, live, uh, uh, um, walk in a, in a certain manner, but there are times when we have to uh, speak up. Yes. We can't be ashamed of him and his words, but when he returned, he said he would be ashamed of us when he comes. In his glory, in the glory of the Father, and with his holy angels. Let us be committed, devoted, and loyal. Amen? Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus has the power what, of an endless life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. He's the second person of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. He has an endless life. All the priests before him could not remain because of what? Death. Amen? Amen. He, 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 Jesus obtained his priesthood because of, not because of he belonged to the tribe of Levi, mm -hmm. but by, amen, he lived a sinless life. By his, his virtue, his deity, amen, he obtained his, his righteous priesthood. Mm -hmm. Where you and I mm -hmm. can come boldly to the throne of grace mm -hmm. and can obtain mercy and help in our time of need. That's that new and living way. Mm -hmm. the, the, the veil has been torn. Yes. And we can go in because our great high peace priest is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And he lives forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Go back to Hebrews 7. In verse 14, I'm going to read through. We'll see where it takes us. For it is evident that our Lord and Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Amen? Amen? For he testifies. Listen now, here it is again. Thou art a priest forever after the order of 
male kills a day. Amen? Mm -hmm. For there is verily, or there is truly a disannulling or setting aside. There is truly a setting aside of the commandment. Mm -hmm. Going before for the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. Amen? Mm -hmm. Listen, it's a setting aside of the commandment because it was it, it was of its weakness and on its unprofitableness. Now, what is that weakness and unprofitableness? Amen. Mm -hmm. That it had to be set aside. Where the law was weak and that it couldn't bring about an inward change. Mm -hmm. The law didn't bring an inward change yeah. in a person. Amen. The law did not bring what? Salvation. Right. The law did not, could not bring us closer to God. Amen? Yeah. But now what does Christ say? Draw it out of me, mm -hmm. and I'll draw it out of you. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, and i come unto you. See, the, the, the uh, Old Testament law, it was, a, it was truly had to be set aside because uh, it, of, uh, of its weaknesses and of profitableness. And also, there was no salvation in the law. Amen? Amen. So the Levitical priesthood is set aside and the Mosaic law is set aside. Amen? Amen. Why? Because it, was not a, it could not accomplish God's saving purpose. There was no salvation under the Mosaic law. Again, it was weak and unprofitable because it could not bring about a human change. There was no salvation. Amen? Yeah. In the law. Amen. It was weak, one interpreter said weak and useless in regard to redemption. It's weak and useless in regard to redemption. Mm -hmm. Redemption came in the New Testament in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's how it come. It was unprofitable, the Mosaic law. It could not fully accomplish what God's purpose. Only in the New Testament. By Christ. Amen? Yes, God. Now look at verse 10. And we go in here. I'm sorry. Chapter 10 and verse 1. What does it say? For the law having a shadow. See? Hebrews 10 and 1. The law having a shadow of good things to come. The Mosaic law mm -hmm. was a type and a shadow of good things to come. Mm -hmm. And not the very image okay. of the thing. Mm -hmm. Can never. Mm -hmm. The law can never. Mm -hmm. With those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. What sacrifices? Mm -hmm. Of the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a helper sprinkling the unclean. Amen? Amen. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices, with those Old Testament sacrifices right. which they offer year by year, right. they offer year by year continually mm -hmm. make the comers of your act mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. You could make them perfect. Only in Christ can we be seen perfect in God's eyes. Yes. Wow. Because of what he offered. What did he offer? His own blood. Yes, yes. He's our what? Propitiation mm -hmm. for our sins. Thank you. Amen? You know what the Bible says? Yes. Amen. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and not for our own, but also for the sins of the world. In 1 John chapter 2, he's our what? Advocate with the Father. Yes. Jesus Christ, the righteous. 
And he is our propitiation, our, our appeasement. He satisfied God. His blood satisfied God. Yes. For our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. The law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very end of the things can never, with those sacrifices, saints, which they offer year by year continually, make the covenant there unto perfect. Can't make us perfect. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can what? Make us perfect. Verse Chapter 7 and verse 19 says, For the law made nothing perfect. Hebrews 7 19 says, The law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did. All right. By which we draw near unto God. Amen. See, we can draw near to God. Yes. Because of the better hope we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Draw not of me, and I draw not of you. Mm -hmm. Come unto me, and I come unto you. Not in the Old Testament. Not on the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. God told Moses to tell people to stay by. Mm -hmm. Don't come, come to the foot of the mountain. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, he says, come unto me and I come unto you. Draw down to me, I draw down to you. Amen. Amen? Praise God. But under the law, it makes nothing perfect. But the bringing of a better hope did when we draw near to God. I can continue. Let's stop. Let's stop here. Give God a praise that we can draw what, near to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I thank God for you tonight. Amen. I pray God will continue to, amen, reveal himself to us in the book of Hebrews. And I, and I know that he is. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let us continue to keep praying for this expository teaching in the book of Hebrews. Amen? Yes. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word tonight. We thank you for the demonstration of your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, teach us and instruct us, empower us and enable us to preach and teach the word, to be healed of the word, and now to be doers of the word. Father, we thank you that we heard your still, small voice. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in the service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord.